Well, this was a very important step for the German and for the French population, not only for the government, and it was an important step for the unification of Europe, for the deeper unification of Europe, because uh, Germany and France were the two largest states in the EU, and uh, they had a special importance and a special responsibility. They had a responsibility because for centuries there were enemies, and uh, this was the first sign that there is a new Europe coming. And if you look back to the year uh, 1963, it was the time of Cold War. The Berlin Wall was built two years before. Uh, we had the division not only of Germany, but also of Europe. There was a western part of Europe and an eastern part of Europe. The eastern part influenced by the Soviet Union. And at that time, Germany and France gave an example how to manage future. That means by friendship, by cooperation, by building Europe, a free Europe, a united Europe. And this was the most important step at that time. And you can find a direct line from this event in 1963 to the fall of the Berlin Wall, of the division of Europe, and to the accession of um, Slovakia and other Middle East European states in 2004. Yes, I think it was, of course, uh, basically a bilateral agreement. Uh, but uh, for two countries, we had who had a vision on what Europe should uh, look like. So this bilateral agreement was a kind of uh, cornerstone for a. Uh, the future of European uh, uh, construction and, and how the European Union actually built up on that friendship because it was essential to uh, um, make this union enduring. Um, and in that way, I think that uh, it was uh, a, a prefiguration of what Europe should look like when it would be united. Of course, I think that that time nobody was thinking uh, that so quickly uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Berlin Wall fall, but uh, I'm sure that it was also in in, uh, in the vision of uh, uh, General de Gaulle and and, and Bundeskanzler Adenauer. And just to uh, symbolically mark that, it, it happens that today is the 16th of April, uh, and uh, it's the anniversary of the Athens Treaty by which uh, Slovakia and other uh, you can, uh, Eastern Europe, EU countries joined the, the European Union. So it's also a way of celebrating uh, that anniversary. I think it's, um, of course, uh, very symbolic in a way because it's formal meetings, but it's also a way of sharing together common issues and, and try to find common solutions to, to uh, our, our um, daily uh, problems uh, as, as governments. Um, and uh, it also creates personal relationship between political um, um, People, ministers, and 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 head of gov head state and governments, and this personal relationship builds uh, confidence. And and of course, it doesn't mean that we have to agree on everything every day because that's not how how life is 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 uh, in 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 real life <laughs> actually. But um, it's it's the I think a very efficient way to uh, um, build up confidence, mutual knowledge. And, and share uh, views on, on t in order to solve concrete, real problems for, for our citizens. Uh, and I think this um, institutional model actually has um, uh, had uh, effects since I understand that today Slovakia is also organizing joint ministerial meetings with its neighbors, uh, with Poland, uh, with the Czech Republic, of course. And I think we might have inspired other European countries in, in, in deepening and, and uh, improving these day-to-day uh, -day bilateral relationships.
as always, I fully agree with my French colleague, <laughs> and uh, it was indeed uh, confidence building between our two states, um, and you have no other example in this dance of uh, uh, information which is flowing from one side to the other side, cooperation in all fields, economic, uh, uh, traffic, uh, um, in um, military uh, cooperation, and this is really important, this is confidence building as at its best, and um, it's also an example for other states to follow, because we uh, gave an example to a very close cooperation between our governments, and this is independent from any change of government. Mm -hmm. So um, the German-French cooperation over all the decades, if you look from uh, Willy Brandt um, to, to Helmut Schmidt, Giscard d'Estaing, from um, um, Helmut Kohl, Mitterrand, Schröder, Chirac, and now Merkel, Sarkozy, and later now uh, Hollande, you find a very deep cooperation. Okay, they don't agree in every, every point, but on the general line, they know about their responsibility to give new um, move to the European cooperation and reunification. That is, that is, I think, one of the most important steps to do it by um, bilateral uh, cooperation of the cabinets and of the ministers. It's not, not only uh, at the political level, governments and, and head of states and governments, uh, but also at the civil servants level, that uh, we have permanent instruction as, 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 uh, as soon as we've been appointed at um, responsibility position in civil service to immediately meet with our German counterparts so that also between the civil services this confidence and this mutual knowledge um, is, is built and, and maintained. It was not difficult. We gave a good example for other states to do it with their neighbors. I don't want to mention any, but uh, you know what I mean. Because to um, look into history with um, a common sense of, of history and, and to find uh, a common way how to manage the, the, the view on history, that is the first important step to go to the future. Because if you don't uh, look what you have done in the past, you cannot manage the future. And so it was a decisive step to do this with the Historic Commission to make a common course book uh, German-French and we did it with Poland because we had for a long time a very problematical relationship with Poland over all the centuries and uh, uh, this was a story of success but with Poland we could only manage after the change of, of 89 and now we have uh, uh, very good relations with Poland we have the Weimar Triangle together with France and Poland. And, okay, Poland is a member of uh, this triangle because Poland is a little bit larger than Slovakia and Czech Republic and Hungary. Hungary. And so um, we have a good cooperation also in this frame and um, we will continue to build Europe in this triangle. Yes, it's, uh, I think, extremely important and substantially to have the common understanding of our past, of our history, uh, and to explain it and teach it to our children so that uh, uh, we do not reproduce in the future the, the errors that we made in the past. And uh, I think that was not only symbolically, but also in, in, in trying to um, root as deeply as possible this common understanding of what our values, our uh, goals were uh, within the European Union, but as uh, two countries had been fighting for so long, um, it was really substantially important and long-lasting effects uh, since uh, we hope that uh, the children and, and, and their children will, will also share this, uh, this vision. Even though I, I guess that for many of our children or kids that are now at school, um, it is something like so natural that France and Germany 
our friends, and also because of this uh, education process and the uh, uh, French German uh, youth office and all the efforts that were made to bring the people together and, and, and share this common vision. In Germany we have maybe a little bit another view because France is more west. We cannot change it, <laughs> it's the geographical situation. But Germany, for Germany, the Mideast uh, area was always an area which was a little bit German influenced by German settlers, for example. In Slovakia you have the Carpathian Germans, in Hungary you have a large German minority, same in Poland. And um, this was some special responsibility to make, first of all, after the change of 89 and 90, uh, the, um, the development to integrate these states into the European Union. It was a promise given by Helmut Kohl at that time, because all these states helped us a lot to manage the German reunification. And to integrate these states into the European Union, or at that time European Community, was the first step of European politics in this time. And, um, okay, I, I mentioned already, Poland is the largest state of, of these four Visegrad states, and um, so we had a special relationship with Poland, and we have it still, but uh, also with all other Mideast states, um, Mid-East European states, we have good relations, especially with Slovakia, and um, this is important for, for the cooperation in Europe to manage all the crises we have. As Axel just said, uh, history and ge geography are what they are. I mean, um, there's been some long-lasting and, and beneficial influence of Germany or Germans in general, because Germany is quite recent creation, but uh, of, of German culture uh, and German knowledge in this uh, in this uh, part of Europe, which is less the case for France, um, and um, I, I think that's also why Germany has special responsibility in this area. Uh, but um, there's been also uh, a strong will from uh, President Hollande to actually rebuild uh, and reinforce uh, French uh, relationship with these countries uh, and to um, develop uh, these uh, relationship uh, after some years when Central Europe was considered as a less important group of partners uh, in, in the uh, European uh, debate. And uh, uh, it was uh, actually uh, shown in the, uh, the different meetings that our uh, uh, leaders had in the past year now. Uh, they met already uh, uh, three times uh, with a uh, high level. We expect a high level visit by the end of this year. And, and I think that it's a deliberate effort in order to, to uh, um, show more interest and to, to share more discussions with, with our uh, Euro Central European partners. That's been the case in Poland, it's been the case with Slovakia. Um, for different reasons, it's a li little bit less the case with the Czech Republic and, and with Hungary. Uh, but I'm sure then when situation evolves uh, in a positive way, uh, this debate, well, these discussions was all, will also deepen with these countries. We fully agree in all important uh, questions of, of European uh, politics and uh, it's for us uh, uh, really important to have a common view on, of, on this, uh, uh, at this scene. But um, uh, I know it's, it's a question of growth in Europe, which is the most important question also for the French government, how to make 
growth, how to produce growth. And if you look to the figures we have worldwide, growth is only outside of Europe. China is growth, India is growth, Brasilia, South Africa, there you find growth. But what is about Europe? Europe is a little bit developing at the same place now, and we have to come forward. And this is a question for every member state, how to manage it to make the state fit for growth. And um, to manage the debt crisis is self-evident, because if we do not solve the debt crisis, was, this would be the end of, of Europe and of the European development. So we must focus on the question how to make growth. And every state has its, its uh, own um, responsibility and its own view on this question, but in the end I think there is a common willing to manage this problem and to manage this crisis. And so I'm very confident that uh, France will be on the same road as Germany and Germany on the same road as France. We should uh, clearly remember that the, the all start, everything started with the financial crisis that revealed the debt crisis. But the, the, in, the initial problem was a financial crisis and a financial de deregulation that led to some incredible excesses in, in, in the financial world that had very strong consequences on banks and from banks uh, it, it, which were connected with governments. Uh, we had uh, this debt crisis revealed uh, and Euro, Euro uh, um, zone um, crisis for some countries. Uh, and that's why it's so important that this banking union is um, put in place as soon as possible to cut the connection between banks and, and the governments and, and states. Uh, but you mentioned this uh, smallest common denominator, but it's incredible what we managed to achieve uh, since uh, the beginning of the crisis in, in, in uh, four years so many very important things happened. We found agreement on such important, substantial uh, issues for the management of, uh, of the European Union and the Eurozone. And, you, and I think that that was not possible without, first of all, a French-German friendship. This is not only friendship, I mean, a, a will, a very deep and strong will to find solutions as quickly as possible within the uh, um, existing institutions and, and decision-making processes, but uh, finding common solutions to solve the problem, but it, which has been extremely, extremely bad. And at some point, we were not sure to find the right answers, and, and we were close to falling into a black hole, actually, all of us. Uh, we managed to find the, the right answers and the right solutions, and I think we are now on the on the, the the right path to to go out of this crisis, uh, we are debating on uh, how what is the best way to do um, to to keep this uh, um, budget discipline, but at the same time not to kill uh, any chance of growth and and, and actually to to die uh, healthy in a way. Uh, so we we, we want. Uh, to find this uh, right path and we are discussing it, we are discussing it with the Commission and other uh, important countries. Just to add up on one, one your, of your question regarding the Eurozone and the responsibility of the members of the Eurozone, it is clear that when you belong to a, um, such a currency, common currency union, you make your own decisions. Maybe you can inform your, your partners of what, what's happening because there, it has consequences on, on their own economy. Uh, but these decisions, it's your decisions. You cannot uh, share with other people who have not the responsibilities and the budget consequences that it has on, 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 uh, on the Eurozone. So it's also very important to stress that fact, even though, of course, we have to inform partners.
Well, we do it everywhere, um, and uh, we have our instructions, and we are happy to have this conference here in Bratislava, but there will be also conferences in all other states. And um, uh, this shows you the, really the deep cooperation between our two embassies worldwide. And um, uh, concerning the question of um, federal state, yes, we are a federal state. And if you look to German history, the time when Germany was a federal state was always a good time. It was no good time if we were a central state. And uh, so we enjoy it to have 16 German lenders, and these 16 German lenders also cooperate with French uh, regions. For example, the, the Free State of Thuringia has a cooperation with Picardy in France and Malopolska in Poland. So they make the triangle on the regional level. And there are a lot of cities uh, in our states who have triangle relations between um, uh, Polish, uh, French, German, German cities, and it, it's um, something that is going deep in our relations. That that brings aspects also for the people to to see how cooperation works with the other path. Okay, now in the time of internet, we don't have so many exchanges on on a real basis. Use exchange was one of the fundaments of the uh, German French. Uh, friendship in the 1960s, use exchange because it was a time where many people, a lot of people didn't have the money to pay a visit or a tourist visit in, in another country. And uh, so this was deepening the German and French um, uh, friendship and I saw it in my own home village. We had a cooperation with uh, uh, Castelnau Medoc, a wonderful wine region in near Bordeaux, and so I'm still a friend of Bordeaux wine. And <laughs> and um, the conference, okay, I mentioned already, will will bring this German-French friendship to the Slovakian public. It's a it's a public conference, and we hope that the media will present it to the population and. We hope for a good result. Europe is uh, an ongoing uh, um, project. Uh, it took uh, 50 years, uh, 60 years now to uh, uh, reach the point uh, we've reached now. Um, it will take also a very long time to continue to mature and, and evolve in probably, and I hope, an inter more integrated uh, um, union. Um, talking about, you know, federation, state, uh, um, unified state, uh, federation of sovereign states, it's, you know, language. I think we've been learning t um, step by step uh, how far we could go at a particular moment. At this point of European history, we have to consolidate with, with what we've achieved, uh, and which is absolutely enormous. I mean, people just assume that it's here, but it is an enormous effort and probably a unique endeavor in human history, political and, 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 and um, economic history uh, ever. So uh, uh, these achievements are extremely important. They've been creating extremely positive uh, effects for the population, for our uh, uh, common prosperity. Um, and we have to adapt to what we've reached now. And we fear, well, we feel that at the moment people don't want to um, um, discuss any further about union, about uh, um, integration, about European state. But that's clearly the, 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 the underlying project that's clearly the vision and it will take the time it will take uh, but I'm sure that all European countries and, and people will, will understand that uh, we have to go further if we want to remain uh, a important entity in the world and, and, and an entity that has its say in uh, global crisis in development, in uh, 
um, uh, climate change, uh, all these fundamental issues that uh, we will have to face in the, in the coming 50 or 100 years. And if Europe doesn't continue integrating, it will disappear as a global actor. And that's not what we want. It's just way and the time we will need to go further, but I'm sure we will. It's always time for consolidating in all the phases of the European uh, Union, but the European was, Union was always open for states who agree with the principles of this Union and who uh, are willing to come to this uh, uh, Union. It's, it's not so easy now to manage 27 member states, but um, we have Croatia from in the next month, a couple of months, Croatia will come and there will be other states who are coming to Europe because it's still attractive to be a member of the European Union. And that is the message we send uh, to the whole world and here in Bratislava. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.